for you now You got two minutes of my time And I don't really break too easily But I'm worth it Cause I'll slip into your dreams tonight Oh So give me, so give me your all I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind Just watch me break it Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, I'm in a new setup. We have now finished my closet and I am so beyond thrilled with how it turned out. And as promised, I did vlog the process. Dan did everything himself. He did such an amazing job. And so I kind of filmed the whole process from the before because it was a fairly gloomy room. Um, there was kind of gray paint on the walls and gray carpet. So we took that up and Dan laid wooden flooring and then we also painted everything white and then obviously installed the wardrobes which all came from Ikea and then Dan did the customization so it was a multi-step process but I did try and vlog as much as I could so I will cut away in a second to the whole process and how we did it. In terms of actually planning the space, initially when we were looking at what to do with this room, we very much thought that we would go with outside contractors. We are getting some work done in other parts of the house, so we kind of thought we would either get a carpenter to do it or otherwise go with a proper wardrobe company. We got quite a few quotes in and they were all, for the most part, really, really expensive and the designs looked amazing, um, but they were definitely very pricey. And then one very nice contractor told us that actually we weren't probably getting the best value for money because where it really makes sense to hire an outside company is when you have quite a difficult space to work with like we have upstairs if you guys watch my house tour you'll know we have very sloping ceilings in the bedroom and so we are getting a kind of carpentry company to come in and then build custom wardrobes for that and he was saying that that makes total sense because you know that's quite difficult to do but actually when it comes to just a regular square room you're not getting the best bang for your buck just because it's fairly straightforward and that was just so nice of him and because of that we began looking at other options. I was browsing Pinterest and I came across this blog post where they had hacked an Ikea closet and they had done the most amazing job. You would never guess that it was Ikea and it just looked incredible. I will link that down below because that 100% inspired my closet and it's just the most useful thing. They were so generous with their knowledge. They broke it down step by step and so I would 100% 100% recommend if you are planning anything like this to look at that blog post. I don't know how many times we referred back to it. And even though my closet does look quite different, a lot of the kind of tips that they shared, we took on board and we used here. So it was very much the starting point for this kind of whole area. So I will definitely make sure to link that down below in the description section. Definitely worth a read. Um, but I would say regardless of the space that you're dealing with, the beauty of IKEA packs is that they do have that plan on their website and so you can really use it for any space and you can make any space work with their wardrobe system because it is so customizable. We went for two um, one meter wardrobes and then two 75 centimeter wardrobes but we only went with that because that's the space that we had. Obviously you can make it work with many other different sizes as well. So I will cut away to the footage now and um, it did take quite a bit longer than we thought um, but Dan was also figuring all of this out for the first time himself. Um, we took the blog post as a kind of starting point but we did deviate a little bit here and there um, just to kind of make it work for the room that we had and also what we wanted to do and the kind of look we wanted to create and um, so there was a lot of trial and error but I think he just did an amazing job and I will cut away now to the before and then the process. Okay so this is the almost empty room except for that one shelf which we have to move. This is the room that we are going to be tackling it's gonna be a complete redo. So we're taking up the carpet and laying down flooring, um, and then we're putting in the wardrobes and then painting as well. So it's a bit of a dreary day, so it's gonna be difficult to tell, but hopefully it's gonna really lighten up the room and hopefully it'll look really good as well as being functional, fingers crossed. The carpet is now up and we have this kind of fairly cushioned underlay. And then I think we have to lay another underlay on top of this for the type of wood that we have. Um, so I'm not sure if this is also coming up, but first we are going to be painting. So we're just doing a nice um, bright crisp white. 
uh, because the wardrobes are going to be kind of like an off-white color okay so this is the progress it's sounding very echoey in here because there's no flooring um but we finished painting we didn't know whether it would need two or three coats um but we got pretty lucky and i think it's going to be okay with two coats it's still looking a little bit gray because of the reflection from this wall and um, we've not painted the accent wall just because that's going to be covered with wardrobe so there's absolutely no point but everything else is completely white and Dan has already started with the underlay you can see here and he has started with the edging of the flooring I'm so excited about the color I wasn't really sure it's always so difficult to tell just from a small sample um, but actually I think it's really nice so we went for slightly shorter ones than the downstairs area just because it's a slightly smaller room uh, well not slightly it is a much smaller room so hopefully it will look good. This is just the edging and then it's going to be the kind of um, herringbone pattern. Okay, so the flooring is more or less done. We have to kind of clean up in places, but it's all kind of laid out. I'm so happy with how it looks. Dan did such an amazing job. So now we're just on to the units. A bit of a progress update. So the units are up. I actually meant to film Dan putting these up, but he did this last night and I kind of thought he'd be like one unit in and he just like put them all up really quickly. So not so much a progress shot, but they look great. I'm super happy with them. Um, now today he's going to be tackling the drawers, I think, and the shelves and then the customization. So. Hopefully I will try and film some of that. This is meant to be a lot easier. Is that painted? This means it didn't slide in originally. And now I'm really not sliding in. Oh, because the paint? I get out of the because I'm trying to peel something back. Which is a particularly fucky task. You guys, it's beginning to take shape and I am so excited. The skirting board has made such a big difference, I feel. And I know there's a lot left to do. Um, we have to kind of do the molding and the draw fronts and everything, um, but I love the lights and I'm just really, really excited to see it come together. Dan's in the garage now because he needs to do some, I don't know, woodwork or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm hopeful in the next couple of days it's gonna look a lot more finished. So we didn't make that much progress yesterday. I'm using the Royal Wee here because I'm clearly not doing that much here. Um, but Dan started to put the customization on. So that's a piece of wood right there. Obviously we need to paint it, which hasn't been done yet. Um, and then the skirting board got fixed as well, but we didn't have um, one of the pieces that we needed. So Dan has to try and track that down today, which I'm not sure how easy it's gonna be because we are in lockdown. I think that the DIY stores are open though. Um, so we are going to attempt to get that, but it is getting there just slowly. You can see in the corner there, um, he's kind of fixed that piece of wood ready um, for the covering. So it's mainly just the front coverings now because we do have the shelves to go up and the lights are already attached in there as well. The handles have arrived and they are just what we wanted and um, we didn't want to go for a gold one just because we wanted to spray paint it so we got a brushed one and we're going to spray paint them to match the gold rails right there. So what have you been doing today? Today not super much, it's finicky work so I've cut the MDF strips to size, put them on the front, filled the gaps, painted it, your mum actually painted it. Um, My mum's painter extraordinaire. Marking up the ceiling for where the clothing's going to go and then attaching corners onto the main bits so they can connect together properly. Oh wow, those look corner. great. Uh, yeah, it would have been better than how I'd done it myself. Um, so yeah, it hasn't been too much today, um, but I'm hoping I can get everything up tonight. Your mum will then have to paint it, um, which will take overnight to dry, but... And then I'm going to do the knobs right now, the handles, the pulls. Well, you probably want to wait till your mom paints. Why? Because she's going to be painting the front of the drawer, right? No, no, they're, they're separate. So I'm just going to do them before we do anything. I'll just spray paint them. Sorry, but you're not, you're not putting them on yet? No, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and then, so what I've got to do left, so I've got to put the code we've got top, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put these on now, I'm going to measure the drawer front so I can go and make something custom sized. Um, then once they go on and the coving goes on, that's pretty much it. I'm most excited about the coving. I think that's going to be like instant transformation. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'll then have to put all of the skeleton board back on, coving around the rest of the room. Um, Ooh, I'm getting coving around the whole room. Yeah, I mean, it would have been a lot easier if I didn't do that. But Yeah, I didn't know that was happening. Yeah, that was why I got corners. So ah, oh, that's going to be great. Um, yeah, so that should be fine. And then once that's all up... That you know what, I'm going to like that so much that I'm going to want coping or moulding like around every single room in the house. <laughs> Shouldn't do these things down. Job number five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then that should be fine. Um, and yeah. To be honest, I think I like most of these lights, which is easy. The lights but are ridiculous. Things. They're the lights, so cool. The lights are good. Yeah. Um, yeah, should be all right. Yay. So this is the first coat done. I think they came out great, really pretty. They do need a second coat because there are some marks here and there. Um, so the second coat will hopefully solve that, but I think they are looking so nice so far. And hopefully with the second coat, they will be a perfect match for the rails. All right, the molding is happening. I'm just sat on the floor watching, <laughs> watching and filming. So it is super, super gloomy today, but the closets are kind of pretty much there. Obviously we need to paint, but in terms of Dan's work, he finished up the coving, the drawer fronts, and I'm just so excited with how it's looking. Um, so now we have to prime it, paint it, and obviously um, pop in the rails, door handles, and then also the plugs as well. But it's so good to kind of see it properly come together and properly see some water up space. Can you explain to everyone what you're doing, please? Um, putting adhesive on the coving yeah. before I mount it on the ceiling. So the customization is almost done. Um, the drawer fronts are on. Had to redo um, a couple of them with filler um, because they weren't quite straight, hence all the clumps. Um, but that's just drying now. Coving looks so great. I'm so excited. And then as soon as that is done, then we're going to prime it and then paint and then the handles can go on. So we have painted most of the units in the drawers. We need to do some touch ups because in the drawers didn't come out quite so straight. So we are touching those up now. So it's taking a little bit longer than we thought, but I love the look of it so far. I feel like the white paint makes such a difference. And obviously we have to put in the extra shelves and the rails, but it is finally starting to take shape. All of the drawers are off now because we're starting to put the handles on. I feel like we've taken one step backwards, but hopefully to take two steps forwards. Um, it is looking a bit bare without the drawers, but they are going back on. That was totally my effort putting that in there. And then I realized it was going to scratch the paint. And so, I was like, right, this is why I don't do DIY because I'm really, really bad at it. Okay, you guys, so the handles are on. We need to do a couple of finishing touches. Obviously there is no skirting board um, and we need to reattach um, a couple of these right here, if you can see that because um, they're not quite straight. Um, so we're gonna be doing that, but I'm quite eager to be filling it all up because I haven't had water at space and ages and just the whole floor's a mess. So overall, I am super, super thrilled. And this is just the view um, without any of the lights on. So the lights are really great. Obviously there are spotlights in the room anyway, um, but then the water lights just turn on with a remote control and you can choose between um, cool and warm light, which is really cool. And then when the main lights turned on, you can see it kind of slows quite a bit more.
So everything that you see here except for the customization like the coving and also the planks of wood that you see here that kind of join the two wardrobes together, everything else is from Ikea including the rails which we just spray painted gold and I think they came out absolutely amazingly. I love the fact that we did this. I was debating it because I wasn't sure if it was going to look too much um, but I think they came out great and we spray painted everything including the the thing that kind of joins the rail and the wardrobe up. Another thing that we did, which I don't think I actually remembered to vlog, um, but we actually wallpapered the background. And I'm so glad that we did. We did actually paint all the wardrobes as well and off-white, but to be honest, I'm not fully sure that was worth it um, because it was a bit of a hassle. And I just don't think you can really tell that much. Um, whereas I do think that the wallpaper was 100% worth it. It does hide the seam that you usually get with Ikea wardrobes. And I just think it adds like a little bit of texture and I think it looks really pretty. So obviously we didn't go for a dramatic color, you know, it's still, I guess it's like an off-white with like a slight silver pattern, but I really love it. I think it looks beautiful. Um, so the wallpaper and the gold spray paint, I would say, were my two kind of favorite customizations apart from kind of what Dan did, obviously. So as you can see, I have Dan here who I thought would be a bit more useful answering some of your questions than I would be because obviously I did not build it. And um, I got a few messages on my Instagram um, just asking me various questions. So I thought Dan could answer some of those. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so the kind of biggest one was how hard it was and whether a kind of novice could do it. Uh, some bits were harder than others. Uh, they would have been easy the second time round, so you learn when you go. So the drawers were quite difficult and we started off with a different vision in mind. I think if I was going to do them again, and I may do them again, um, I would do them in a different way and it'd be much easier. And a lot of it's just learning from your own mistakes. So you'll put up one upright and it'll be really tough and you won't quite get it. But then once you figure that out, the next one's super easy. Yeah, and like I did mention um, in the footage that uh, we had ordered a planer to kind of go over the drawers, but then Dan mentioned to me that he might want to kind of redo them all, and that was because I did change my mind about how I wanted them to look. Initially, I said I wanted completely flush, and then when I looked at it, I was like, oh, actually, like, a small gap would be better, and then that was kind of the source of the problem as well. Yeah, so if I did that again, I would just get one piece of wood that was the exact right size, and then I'd mark off where it needed to be cut, and when you cut it, you lose a bit. Um, where you actually cut it. So that would create perfect lines. And if I had have known that from in the first place, then I would have done it that way. Um, so I may go back and do that again, just because I think we can make them a bit more perfect. Um, and that's just the kind of thing that as you're learning, as you go, that you pick up. And also just the kind of idea of knowing what you want before you start so that you obviously don't have to redo things, which is always really helpful. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of kind of the, the biggest change makers, I guess, the, the items which I think made the biggest difference, apart from, you know, the overall units, obviously. I actually think we're discussing, we think it's probably like the lighting, which was just so inexpensive. Yeah. It was like 20 pounds. Um, can you say how you did that? Because I described it, but I don't think I did yeah, it Yeah, well. so once you put up all the wardrobes and you kind of connect them together and they're all in situ, um, I've got a multi-tool where I can cut out small holes. So I just cut out the holes exactly where I wanted them to be on each wardrobe and then thread the LED through before I blocked it up. So you can't see any of the wiring behind it because that's just to the left of it. So thread it through and um, then it's kind of sticky back. So get it where you want it to be, pull the back strip off, stick it up, pull the next one through. Um, and it really, it, yeah, didn't take too much time, wasn't that painful, super cheap, and it adds, I think, a really good effect to it. Yeah. Um, and then the wallpaper as well. 
was a good shout. Yeah, I think the three things, um, the, the lights, the wallpaper and the gold paint <laughs> just kind of made the biggest difference. And for the most part, they were really inexpensive. Um, the gold paint is just gold paint we got from Amazon. We didn't go for expensive um, handles either because we knew we were going to paint them. So the handles were like under 20 pounds, I think. The rail just came from Ikea. We spray painted them to match. The wallpaper was a bit more expensive. I think it was about 50 pounds a roll, um, but one roll did everything. Um, and I think that just gave it a really nice look and then the lights just 20 pounds so um you don't have to spend a lot on the accessories but i do think it was it's the little touches i think actually made quite a big difference yeah and even with the handles like you were originally looking at some other ones that were quite expensive right? so i had originally looked at these beautiful gold ones which were i think 105 pounds for all the ones that i wanted um and then it was actually my mum that said to me she was like you're already spray painting the rails and you don't know if the color is going to match you might as well do that so i just got really cheap ones um and i love the effect so yeah so that was what, what, like 20 quid it was less than 20 pounds for all of the all the handles yeah. and if you could yeah. spray paint everything you make sure it matches so yeah. like to say that that was what less than 20 percent of the cost yeah amazing and you can guarantee they match and it was just like you didn't even it. use a full can of spray paint for like all the rails and all the handles so <laughs> it's great um in terms of the cost i know the units cost 750 pounds um materials i estimate about 250 is that right not tools just materials just materials so like mdf and stuff MDF super cheap. Um, Twenty pounds for the lights. MDF in total would have been about forty pounds. Um, I guess the drawer handles. On top of that, mm -hmm. I don't think you're getting anywhere near that. Really? Okay, so yeah, under a hundred quid. For all the materials, including the units, we're looking about £850. Um, and then there's the tools, and that obviously depends on what you have. Um, Dan already had a kind of good basic set of tools, but he also bought new ones for this project, but he kind of invested in slightly nicer quality ones because he wanted to do more projects as well. So that's something I guess you have to kind of decide. What tools did you use? Because I have no idea about that. Yeah, so, and, and some of it's uh, mixed between projects as well. So I bought a mitre saw and a table saw, but that was part for this and also part for the flooring that I was laying. So you kind of apportion that cost over different projects. The table saw I think was about 250, but that was a fairly good table saw. It folds up well, it's, you know, pretty robust. Uh, the mitre saw was super cheap and it was probably about 70 pounds. Um, I actually think I should have gone for the upgraded version where you essentially can do bigger cuts. Um, if you're gonna do flooring, maybe spend the extra 30 quid on that one. I didn't think it was necessary at the time, um, so I cheaped out a bit, and I wish I didn't now, but it's fine. Um, what else? I used a Ryobi One Multi-Tool for cutting out the hole, and that's useful. You can put loads of different attachments on it. I find that really useful for loads of different things. That costs about 100 pounds. Um, a drill, which probably under 100 pounds as well. Um, and then, yeah, you, you'll be using things like scrapers um, and just kind of like little tools as you're going along. But I wouldn't say I necessarily shelled out for anything. I think I had most of those to begin with. Yeah. Um, so I will try and get a list from Dan and then list the kind of tools that he um, used. Um, won't list the kind of basics like a drill, things like that. Um, but in terms of like the tools he, you used for the customization, then I will try and get a list of those and pop those in the description section. Yeah, and, so, and some things like you don't need. So for example, I bought a nail gun, which made putting the backing on much quicker and easier than when you normally have to tack it in and hit your thumb and it takes forever. Like you don't need it, a hammer would do, but actually you can just whiz through things really quickly if you have the right tools. So I can list all of those as well, but so they're not all necessary. I'll kind of divide them up into kind of like necessary things and then optional things, yeah. and that might be the best way. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it, you found it useful. If you have any questions for me, or rather Dan, um, let us know down below in the comment section and we will try and get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye see guys. You guys.